I've put it in drive. I have to say, all I'm doing is staring at the uh, the clock that says established in 1919. Of course! The centenary year of the Bentley. Yes, it is. What better way to celebrate 100 years of the Bentley Motoring Car Company than to drive through a motorway service station in one? On a Thursday Fine. in Hertfordshire. <laughs> resplendent in all her majesty. See how the people gaze There's no upon one. her glories. Now, before we hit the main road, what mode would Sir like? Because well, you've got is... Bentley mode. Yes, you, now this is... is an interesting thing about this car. Yeah. I'm going to stop doing that voice because it's annoying. Um, the interesting thing about this car is that you've got comfort and sport modes. It's yeah. a custom mode where you can you know, do your thing. Default is just called Bentley mode, and yeah. that is the blend of settings that the engineers who developed this car believe to be sort of everyday optimum. And I quite like that, in a way, because it is actually a pretty good compromise. It feels fine. I've put it in comfort earlier on. But it's their car. Couldn't feel much. Yeah, but you think, so, oh, God, maybe the engineers just went, oh, what, what they, 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 don't, they designed that while they were at the bloody Nürburgring or something. It's going to go super stiff. But no, it really is. It's just like, it's, it's just the sort of everything's fine mode. Everything yeah. is nice. It's a good setup, good soft ride. Well, I've only driven this thing for about 10 miles, 12 miles, and I... I left it, I put it from B into Sport, I didn't ever go for custom, uh, comfort actually. But I think that B, we, we live in a world where there are too many choices and it does get a little bit nauseating. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty confident that most people who buy one of these will just leave it at B. Leave it at why B. wouldn't you? Let it be. Let, <laughs> Let it be. Seeking words of wisdom. Yeah. Let it be. Leave it in B. Leave it in. Oh, the... they'll get Macca now. They'll get Paul McCartney to. Um, they won't because um, leather interior. Uh, Macca, uh, he they... has a Lexus LS, and he uh, Lexus brought it over specially for him. It has the Japanese spec cloth interior because oh. he doesn't want any leather. Very honourable. I don't know where that leaves the steering wheel because I bet that's still leather wrapped in Japan. Maybe it's not. Maybe they do a what plastic? Well, an, or an Alan Cantara one. It's very sporty for what is a very yeah. serene saloon. But, but yeah, um, old Macca, great. He gets driven around in uh, in an LS with a cloth interior because he is he is big on uh, animal rights and stuff. So he would not buy this because it's um, it's really leathery. Can I tell you? as well, yeah. what this interior is called by Bentley. The colour? Yeah. Have a guess. Well, I mean, I, like, as you know, I'm ever so slightly colour blind, but I would say this is a, an ox bloody, or, it is or ox even blood, slightly yeah. browny blood. Did I slightly patronise you there? Is it like a teacher at school? It is ox blood, Johnny. Well done. Your colour blindness isn't going to hold you back at all. Is that what it is? It's ox blood? Uh, it's not what Bentley call it, sir. Oh, do they call it the blood of a more expensive animal? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oxes, but like really nice oxes. <laughs> Bentley uh, call this cricket ball. Cricket ball. So I just yeah. overtake these people because I can. We've got the stitched diamonds. Yay! Whoa, Nelly! Now what? Visually, yeah. with, this, with this Conti GT, I was very pleasantly surprised with it because I've the last gen car which was in on sale for goodness knows how long mm. a long time like 10 years or something um, I never gelled with it when did the original one come out 2002 I think, I think it was 02 so it's a really long time ago yeah and so we've had this is the third generation over uh, 17 years now so yeah it's, yeah. it's a long old while um, I never really liked it but this is the first so the second generation was basically a tickle of the first yes which I never really liked. It was um, okay. I, I liked it, preferred it with the V8 to the V12, personally. Mm, yes, you're, yes. But it's I know like, we, we differ on that. We differ on that. I don't really see the point of a 12. I oh, mean, but, you there know, are such good eights these days. I'm going to go for this one. You're doing that. Yeah, I'm just it's doing a wide range. I'm just sitting type for... mentality because everyone's keeping. So damn Yes. Oh my god, I've just seen how fast we're going. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
I know it's a cliche about cars like this, and people always go, oh, they're so effortless. And I was going, I can't remember the last car I drove that was effortful in as well. My Defender, probably. Yeah, that Needs requires a, bit of a lot. Yeah. Well, the, the, the gear stick arm gets, comes under a lot of strain. Before that, probably like a Ford RS200 or something. But, but genuinely, this just gets a right old canter on <laughs> when you're not even really aware of it. And that is partly though because it's a twelve. Yeah. And I know I know you're not a big fan of a twelve. Well, but I don't I do think. I don't I certainly don't hate twelves across the board. There's, there there are twelves, and I know there's a special sound to them. But I. Of course, this isn't. I mean, this isn't. It's the V twelve. It's W twelve. So it's got a sort of slightly different. Yeah. Sound to it. The W twelve is a very complicated, and I'm not entirely sure whether it's any better engine. There's something slightly unholy about it, but well, it's not pure. Yeah, it's odd, isn't it? But they've made it work, and it's you know, yeah. it's got advantages. It's it's. Um... But did you like the Golf V5? Yes, because I always thought it was an exceptional engine. It was, it was weird. interesting though, wasn't it? Because it was weird. Yeah. So weird, but brilliant. Um, this is the 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 latest W12 out of the Bentayga. Yeah. But it can now run on six cylinders. Under light loads. Oh, it does that very invisible cutback. Yeah. Cylinder drop off, whatever you call it. It's cylinder cull. Cylinder. <laughs> <laughs> just a quiet cull, isn't it? We just the weaker cylinders have been asked to sit down. <laughs> and and just yes, just sit on your hands. Not needed. Um, it's like when a ninja comes out of out of the darkness and just cricks the neck, like that, and that's it. You're dead. No one knew about it. Yeah, yeah, the only difference being that the, the cylinders are allowed to come back to life. They're allowed to come back to life, and and they do. I've I've been trying to work out when it's doing that, and I honestly can't. I think it's sort of you know. Really Does it have a logo, or doesn't even have like the Mercedes? I didn't see the there's logo. Little, is there a little piston logo on the Mercedes? Didn't, I think. Yeah, yeah. Where it tells I you how many. Haven't seen the logo. Audis have a logo, I think. Yeah. As well. So maybe there is. I'm just not paying attention. But it is uh, incredible the way that it's done, and you don't yeah. notice any balance. Don't a vibration of them. I mean, it's. You'd think it would make it rough as arseholes. You think it, it would? It's, it's actually quite, quite yeah. impressive. So it does that, and. Um, it's like the, you're trying to. It's like you're trying to move a washing machine into and plumb it in in the middle of the night without your kids or your wife hearing you. It's just one of those tasks where you just, you'd like think this is impossible. There's no way I'm going to not wake anybody up. I wrestling I, a large I, I, weight. A lost count of the number of times that I've tried to move and then plumb in a washing machine in the middle of the night. I've tried to move things in in the middle of the night with nobody I mean, knowing. I'd, I'd say a, a, a more comparable thing for me is trying to enter the house and make way to bed, having possibly gone by the kitchen to get a glass of water when it's late and you're been pissed. drinking. Yeah, I was going to say when you're fully, fully pissed. Because I told you about when I did the full cookie monster on that bag of crisps <laughs> and woke my wife up upstairs. Yeah. And I thought I was being quiet as a mouse. But oh no. no. no, no, no. Um, so another fun I fact that. about uh, this car and its W12. Because W12 is quite compact compared to um, V12. Yeah. Obviously shorter. It's a big cube, I guess. Obviously. Yeah, it is. It is. Do you feel that? Yeah. It rocks sometimes. Yeah, but did it? Is that the cylinder shutdown? Because no, it's still ticking and I've got over. Stop, start, turned off because it was it's just a bit distracting. Um, <laughs> it's just I, eco. eco. Like, See, look, it's the air suspension. It's got, here's another uh, fun fact about the, this car it's got the three chamber air suspension, which means there's more air in the suspension in the air springs in total. So it means so in theory the ride can be softer in its softest setting. And when you put it yeah. into sport, it locks out one of the chambers. And that's right. partly how it achieves greater stiffness. And um, it can react quicker, presumably. Well, it can react quicker because it's got 48-volt uh, electrics on it. Yes, yes. And the anti-roll system is powered by 48-volt electrics, so it's just more powerful electricity yep. that can um, react faster and do more things and can play more tunes on it. And the, I guess the air, the air suspension is, is all part of that. Um, it totally is the same like the Bentayga was, right? Bentayga's yes, yeah, yeah, that's yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think also has three chamber spurrings. Um, but then the engine in this, because this is the first time the, since the original of the Continental GT's been on a new platform, um, the engine is further back, 
the front wheels are further forward. Yeah. Quake distribution on the old one. You know, the old one was fairly, I mean, it, it got better and better and better. And, it did, but, it did. But it always felt very heavy. And not that this one doesn't, but... Because it, because it was heavy... It felt sort of no. It was heavy. still a fast car. Oh, God, yeah. But fast in that way of, like, a cannonball. Yeah. It's very it, fast. Like, there's a sort of slight of sense of, we're slightly out of control here. Yeah. And it felt very nose heavy, sort of like an old Audi. Yeah. Engine in this one's moved back, front wheels have moved forward, so the weight distribution now, instead of being 60-40, favouring the front, it's now 55-45, so it's sort of edging closer to perfect weight distribution. Okay. I wonder if the V8, the V8 will probably be even better, although... Um, this W12 isn't that much heavier than the Bentley V8. Isn't it? Mm-hmm. About 25 kilos or is something. Is that all? Yeah. Might be making that up. It's not Cars. a lot, cause the, which is more because the W12 is quite well packaged and quite compact for a, for a 12. And the V8 is just a sort of regular V8. So, um, so there's, so it's, yeah, it's weight distribution's got better. And then it now runs, just now we're ticking along, it'll be rear wheel drive. It Sweet. defaults to rear wheel drive and then it can punt. I think it's like 35% of the front wheels if it needs it. In sport mode, the most it'll ever shove to the front is like 17%. So it's sort of fundamentally a rear wheel drive, drive car. Yeah. Which I'd like to try to it in snow. I've never done a like an ice drive in one of these. I know that some, I some journalists have. It'd be quite around. nice. Well, now yeah. this one, better balance plus more rear wheel drive. It'll probably do a bit of yeah. rather than just understeering into a snow bank well, quite. on turn two. Yeah. With a ton to of weight, but that wades yeah. in behind it. <laughs> yes, that's it. That's the thing. The old one, it did feel like, oh god, you're going to hit something, and then a massive amount of weight is then follows going to crush you. Your it skull. just follows you in, and I'm always looking back there, going, oh, it's a lot of leather and a lot of steel. It's and a lot of heavy stuff. Uh, yeah, well, no, is it's, it aluminium? It's, it's aluminium. aluminium. It's got an yeah. aluminium skin. It's not a fully alley car, but the skin is aluminium. And they're really pleased with themselves about how sharp the creases on the outside are, because they're done with super forming. Oh, this is super a, forming. It is the German way. They're obsessed with the the super forming, aren't they? So yeah, they they heat the aluminium. I think it's to like five hundred degrees or something, and that makes it particularly sort of malleable to then be able to put sharper creases in it. Yeah, generally, because I think generally aluminium you can't. It's harder to press it as crisply as steel. Yeah. But by super forming, you can get some of that crispness in it. Do you think that when they the engineers are discussing it, they have to say the word super and forming much louder, yes. like capi- verbal capital letters? I, that everybody has a has a megaphone. Super forming. If I could just stop you there, Clive. Um, I think what would really help the overall aesthetic appearance is super forming. <laughs> and then everyone remembers that it's quite impressive. This knurling. 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 You get a baseline level of knurling, I think, like on the stalks and stuff, but then this is like a knurling package um, around the vents and around the clock and on the little organ stoppy things that control your... Um... Oh, yeah, I've not noticed the knurling on the stops. I do like the organ stops. I'll tell you what, though, bloody hell. You know these these multi-speed gearboxes? Yeah. You know, it's like this has got, what, nine speeds? Yeah. So I just thought, oh, I'll just bang it down on the paddles for that corner. And then you're like, oh, God, I'm only still in eighth. It's like yeah. you end up having to play bloody tunes on it. You have to cog it down twice, I think. Oh, yeah, you've got to. I was down, I was taking it down to fourth there for that. But yeah. I've given up now, I'm putting it in drive. But um, another thing, because I set off in this, and in many ways it's sort of, it's it's a supremely buttery car. It's just, oh, you know, the ride's nice, it's very comfortable, it's quiet. And so there's a sort of smoothness to everything. Yeah. It's a circumstance when I was first driving, I was like, that gear change didn't go home smoothly. Just leaving it in drive as well. Just yeah. A change in drive, just a little bit thuddy, and I was like, now that's a surprise. It is on a Bentley. Well, I'd yeah, forgotten, yeah, yeah. you see, this has got a double clutch box. I sort of assumed it was that brilliant eight speed ZF automatic that everyone uses, but no. But why isn't it? Uh, I think because it's, this is a built on the same box of parts as the Porsche Panamera. Right. And I guess when Porsche decided what they were going to do with the Panamera, they went, right, we're going we're going PDK. double clutch. Yeah. PDK, exactly. And Bentley and sort of going... went, Bentley went, well, we're going to try and make this new one a bit more sporty. So, yeah, we're down with that. We don't need an auto. We can just software it to be smooth on an auto, when it's in automatic. And, um, 
and it isn't quite as smooth as a proper horse. So it's, it's a, you know, yeah, most of the time it yeah. is. Just yeah. every so often it just sort of thuds one and you kind of go, oh. Yeah. Um, but then it, it probably is a little bit sort of slam dunkier in when you're paddle in sport. sport. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, well, that's the know. trade-off, isn't it? PDK is a, PD, PDK? PDK. P, PDK is a bit snappier when you're on it, but when you're not on it, which is probably most of the time in a Bentley, mm. I reckon. Yeah. Most of the buyers of this car probably be not on it most of the time. <laughs> I when say, I say not if on you it, did a, a pie chart of <laughs> on it versus not on it. I'm going to say 100 percent not on it. It's, when it's we would say, be my guess. But would the Bentley driver go on it? Do you mean drink driving? Yes. Do you mean? <laughs> oh right. Well, you better make the pie a little bit bigger. Um, you mean I'm, I'm going to be What's on it tonight? Happen, yeah, uh, we've got a. We've, yes. I'm going, to, I'm going to a lovely new restaurant open in town. Um, my wife will be driving. I'm going. I'm going to be, as you would say, on it. On it. On it. Yes. yes. Tomorrow you can morning. Still be on it on on gin, or does it just mean drugs? I don't, I'm not really down with this lingo. On it. Young people use. Um, yeah. And I, that ZF eight-speed box mm. that's fitted in loads of products. That is, is, a, is a brilliant. It's gearbox. just a blimmin'. I just think it makes you wonder why you need a PD, not any kind of double clutch, but... Yeah, in a car like this, it's just be fine, but I guess that's the thing they just decided. What's interesting is Bentley, Porsche did this uh, platform and this, yeah. this set of parts, suspension and all these things, for the Panamera, Yeah. but Bentley were in the meetings when they were deciding what they were going to do, effectively. Right. So, for example... Bentley wanted bigger wheels than Porsche were planning to ever fit to a Panamera. Yeah. And they went, okay, well, you know that thing engineers say where they go, oh, it's package protected. Where they mean they've, they've kind of installed a bit of leeway for future developments. Package protected. Package protected. I don't know, I've not heard that, that term, yeah. actually. You'll go, oh. It sounds like a. You know, you, 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 retire, some, it sounds like a retirement home. <laughs> in fact, we're driving past one, aren't we? Or it's one of those, um, it's like some kind of holiday insurance. Yeah, it's exactly that. It's at all protected. So, um, so Bentley, Bentley were in from the word go on the co-development. Of yeah, the and they went. Could you floors? make sure the wheel arches have the feasibility to stick in like twenty-one inch wheels or twenty-two, whatever they're going to do? And um, and Porsche, you know, I like to imagine they've got okay. a pencil out and changed the drawings, but I think there's probably a, probably a computer. There'll be CAD in there. There's some CAD. Um, what's really, I find it interesting, although it's not technically interesting, is that the first development mules of this car Bentley bought a load of Panamera prototypes off Porsche and cut them down did a you know a cut and shut wheelbase cut and shut job which you know is the standard way to do a development mule is you just take usually an existing car yeah yeah and then just sort of butcher it butcher it but what was unusual and I can't think of another example of this happening what was unusual in this situation was that the Panamera hadn't been announced at that point so Bentley were making development mules by butchering a, another car that was still secret oh yes it's a multi-secret multi-secret so that's it so like they could have really stitched Porsche up by just peeling all the skies yeah, off yeah um, but yeah they were cut and shut uh, top secret Panameras because Bentley were a little bit you know, Porsche had already moved on to sort of next phase of prototypes. Yeah. So Bentley bought their old hacks off them and then cut them up, and that's how that's they got the ball rolling with this with this car. Start right. doing all the development stuff. Now, the, when I drove this car, I think it was on smooth roads. It's, it feels louder than it was when I drove it. Um, mm. It's probably because you can't hear anything. Else. Like the engine and can't hear the engine. Wind noise is good, so really it's just tyre noise, which is. Because this this starts at 160k, does it? Yeah, no, it's about 160. I think it's yeah, about that one. No one will ever own a 160 grand brand new Bentley Conti GT, will they? Does no. anyone buy it with no options? Well, what I've realised is this is like it's like the sort of S model in a in a normal range, or the you know whatever Ford call their entry level cars now. Yeah, Flare or Splash or something like that. If you buy a Fiesta, you're no only, one buys the entry level because no. no one go, everyone goes. Oh God, you can get a Fiesta for twelve grand, and then you go to the showroom and they go, Yeah, we don't actually sell any of those. Listen, we'll do you a deal on the next model up, which has actually got central locking. Yeah, and Bentley, a radio, a covertly pulling the same trick because yes, the. 160 grand Conti GT is 
is the S. Is, is the Bentley Continental Esplanade. You go, oh, is that the entry level? Yes, I'm afraid we don't actually sell any of those. But rather than walk you up the range, all they do is show you the options catalogue and you go, oh, well, I do want radar cruise control, which you get as standard on golfs for yeah. 20 grand. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I do quite fancy um, some floor mats, which you get chucked in on some a focus. Some floor mats. It's incredible. Um, it, which seems very... Wrong, given how prestige the car. Well, I think is. you just have to accept. So this exact car is about two hundred thousand pounds. It's got forty-five grand's worth of options on it, and you basically have to accept this is this is a two hundred grand car. Because some of it is sort of stuff you don't need, but it's nice and you want it. Like what's, what's nice? Aluminium what's... petrol filler cap, and oh, yeah. you get you get an aluminium uh, oil cap in the, on the engine. But they're the things which. The aluminium fuel cap is hidden inside the flap, isn't it? Yeah, and but every time you fill up, you'll go, oh, this is nice. And you won't yeah. notice if you haven't got it, but once you know you can have it, you'll go, oh, I quite fancy that. It's yeah. part of the Mulliner specification. It's like a couple of grand, and they throw in a few little little trinkets, and you yeah. go, oh, screw it, it's a 150-odd grand car. A couple of grand won't hurt, I'll have that. But then before you know it, it is actually a £200,000 car. Well... Scary times. You know, it's odd that they don't just go, times. look, we'll throw in the nice stuff for free, but it costs 200 grand. Okay, so real. I think real the stalks are included in that. Yeah, they're real. They're, they're, they're real metal, metal ended stalks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I like the V12 or the just the word number 12 on the bottoms of the yeah, front wings. Yeah, that's nice, isn't it? In that's the, a with nice the, with a lined. Yeah, that's a cool thing. I like that. So one of the things they're very proud of because they keep mentioning it in all their bump is the roto screen. Do you know about the roto screen? Look, we've got. Nice, got glossy, a big, modern, yeah, flush, flush fitting, screen, yeah. flush fitting, beautiful fit. It is a which good is all the more impressive when you know that it does this. Roto screen! Ah. Now we have dials, one of which is this compass. And look, the needle is always fixed to the north position. It's the actual dial that rotates. It's quite sweet. Bugger me, that's brilliant. It's quite cute, isn't it? Yeah. And then you've got your temp gauge here where it's showing the outside temperature by means of a needle, and then they realise that's basically unreadable. So there's a digital <laughs> so they put display, a digital display. <laughs> as well. But that's Whoa. great. So you've got this, and then it just goes, when you switch the car off, it flips to a total, it's just a, a blank bit of veneer. And it's lovely, but watch how it rotates. It actually has to slightly retract into itself and then turn and pop back out again and the Whoa, fit on it, it is freaking gorgeous I that mean, that's like one of those things one and a really half mil one mil i mean that's really it's tight like, it's, yeah it's less than it's like microns it's incredible yeah well now i thought this was like this is something they talked about a lot in the bump and i thought well you know this is sort of one of the centerpieces of this car they're clearly very pleased with themselves about it and rightly so just because it's so nicely done and you, know, you wouldn't no, yeah. the screen moves when it's like that because it just looks like it's absolutely lock it, solid it tight. Does. There's no margin for movement. I, um, I love the fact that it's not a, a, a stuck-on screen. No, it's, it's, it's very flush. nicely. I want that. Oh, I, I want that piece of car design to just disappear. Well, now here's, here's, there's a little kicker about this, which is that um, this is actually optional, and it's four thousand seven hundred pounds just that, to have the, roto screen. So you go, oh, I really want the compass that rotates um yeah screen. call it five grand Hang on, is that a stopwatch yeah i don't know how that works or why you would want school it, run yeah it's good yeah i've got i've got a few tents off my pb I, i'll tell you who, who who would probably dig that and you know him too <laughs> and you know who i'm gonna say don't is you? it tiff of course it's tiff the only person <laughs> in the world who times mundane activities time, he times <laughs> mowing his lawn and and actually has a PB of mowing lawn times, <laughs> but just incredible. I still can't get over that. Um, I was going to say something rude, but I'm not going to because it, it basically will force both of us to think about Tiff in a love situation. So can't do that. No, can't that's do not, that. That's not head um, up display. You got a head up there. Got the head up display. Uh, Sweet. I think that's optional as well. Everything's optional. Everything is optional. See, I want it to be the other way around with a car like this. You pretty much get everything on it, and then you can take a few bits off if you wanted. It's an unusual way of marketing stuff. I don't know whether well, that would work. I like that. Like we're just, just, just surging. In it? We're surging past people. Because um, ben, 
and now we're going really quickly again. You sort of go, okay, that was a Rover okay. P6. Yeah, oh yeah. This was it? Very pretty V8 P6, oh. yeah. In one of those sort of so what, British this is forestry colours. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know <laughs> what you call it. Yes. Um, that's a, we just I had to get on the anchors there, not super hard, but hard, take off a load of speed. Also, going downhill. And in the original Continental GT, you'd have properly felt like, oh my god, yeah. we're not going to stop. It was a big... There's a lot of momentum, and yeah. this, this felt like it had got it. This is, this is definitely a prettier silhouette. I'm looking at this digital readout here, mm. and seeing that side profile image graphic. I love the backlights of this car. I've the rear view, yeah. rear three quarter, yeah. Because the backlights are now a single thing, and they're quite they're sort of little ovals, ovals and yeah. they're, they're almost reminiscent of the way that car lights used to be, which is sort of quite small and just a single unit. Yeah. And with the rake of the back window and the back deck and everything, it reminds me just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of the old seventies. Um, an 80s Aston V8, yes. Living Daylights. Yeah, Living sort Daylights. Of, yeah. When it was very clean and simple, when the, before they started putting, you know, Prince of Wales spec body kits on it and chisel. Yeah, they were bad. I don't like those. Body yeah, kits. they haven't. They, you realise what a nice, pretty car it is when you see one that's not got that on and yeah. hasn't got the blanked-in grille and stuff. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, it reminds me a little bit of that. I know what you mean because they were. That, the that was when Aston work. weren't particularly rich. And they yeah. they couldn't really develop their own lights so much. No, <laughs> so no they're probably they're off something, are they? Or they're just like generic lorry trailer lights. lights. <laughs> <laughs> they are. But I know I like them. I'm sure they're similar to the the spur. Um, the spur's got ovals. I'm sure it changed changed to ovals. Uh, it slightly did, yes. Mm. Which I which I liked again. Yeah, I love that that's that second gen of spur, or was it third gen? Uh, second gen. You get in a, you get in a Continental, mm. and you always notice the detail and the sumptuousness. It's it it, it does feel special in here. That's the thing. It's in it's here. a bit of a treat. It's like there's yeah. not a bit where you go, oh right, okay, that's where they ran out of steam. Or no, or something. no, you don't. You don't. There's just not. No, and I and you can really have a good poke around. Can't oh you? yeah. Poke away, my friend. You will not find something. I've not found anything. We just go. Oh, that's a bit half-assed because it's just not there. Even to the extent that I, had, I, I don't, I don't really look at engines much unless something's gone wrong. Because you just sort of don't anymore, do you? But no, um, it's because it's all covered up. It's all covered up. And I had a look at the engine in this because I wanted to see how much further back it was. And uh, when I closed the bonnet again, you know, normally you do a little sort of. Drop from There's an height. optimal height. Yeah. So you don't drop it. So you don't go and go. That was too high. But you don't want to do it too low, so it doesn't catch properly. It doesn't it doesn't sit home. You don't want to ruin it. I dropped it from a fairly low height, and it just it went. Thump. And you know normally bonnets are a bit clangy. It did clunk. It, it just. just went, yeah. It was so nice. I had to go back and do it again. So I was like that. And then I was looking in the boot, and it's like the boot carpet is beautifully finished. It's got a pop out power socket. Yeah, it just glides out. I've seen There's that. Yeah, so much stuff. You just go again. It's like you'd own this car. I think you would. You would live with it for a long time, and you would never find anything. We just went. Well, I've been diddled here. <laughs> They've done me out of my two hundred grand. Yeah. They rinse me for a load of options, and then I find out that it's actually got. You know, it's got the boot carpet from a Polo. Yeah. Not going to happen. Not, not that I'm aware of anyway, there's, there's, it, it feels like a proper job and that in itself is quite appealing. Yeah, Bentley have always been good at the attention to detail and, more, and now the outside of the car matches the inside of the car for me. Whereas before, I just didn't, I just couldn't quite gel with it. And it drove pretty well, but I, now, it, now it's, from my relatively short driving time in it, I think it's, but what would you, let's think, if we were going to buy, we were going to buy one of these today. Yeah. What are its competitors? Something has to be eleven. Yeah. Uh, yeah, DB eleven, wouldn't it? Yeah. It's DBS is way more. So DB eleven. Yeah. DB eleven. Um, would would there be a high a, a Porsche that would come close in terms of? Would you get a Panamera Turbo S? Um, rah, rah, rah. I suppose you could, but yeah, yeah, I suppose you could. I mean, it's a bit vulgar. I mean, I was thinking more that actually, if you are a two-door sort of person. 
you're just you're getting a 911 and specking it up. So Turbo S. Because let's be honest. Yeah. A a normal 911, a Carrera, Carrera S. Yeah. It's kind of a GT car now. It's yeah. a GT car that's just good at being a sports car. Yeah. But you could cruise all day in a 911, particularly it's got the PDK on it, and you just you know you stick it and everything soft and automatic. Yep. And um, I'd totally have one over a pan. I think I would if I didn't need the door. I know I would if I needed the doors. This is actually the thing. Would I have one of these over a DB11? Yeah, definitely. It's just got a nicer interior. I, I think it's better at being a big fat boy car, which is really what you want for one of these. Um, yeah, this is a proper kind of, you know, yacht owner who eats well. Definitely eats well. You know what I mean? The, like, Five course. Yeah, proper, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, no, make if you're no doing this car properly, it. you're someone who habitually has a napkin nearby that they just dab the corner of their mouth with. With, the, sorry, with their sorry. initials on. Uh, yeah, possibly, but just, oh, it's just it's a sign of someone who eats, eats yes. well. And, yes. um, it's and not richly, a... and there may be a little bit of gout, but that's oh, fine. As long yeah, as it's yes. in the left foot, it's not going to affect your piloting of the content. So. Oh no, there's definitely um, there's, there's definitely a lot of rich food eating going on. <laughs> rich food eating. <laughs> and a lot of multi-wine, multi-wine <laughs> drinking. And that's the kind of lifestyle you need to lead if you are giving oh. it full Conti. But if I wasn't, if I was more of a sort of, I'll just have a salad yeah. and a mineral water, and I'm a sporty-minded sort of person, this is very lovely and it'll do all the sporty things you actually need really in the real world, which isn't that much most of the time. But it's bloody talky, blooming quick. Yeah, oh yeah, you can crush people with hopes and dreams very easily with just a, a tickle of the right foot. I know. Sweet. But, I'd probably go 911 in that case. A nice spec, a GTS 991. Yeah. We'll see how the new G992 pans out, Carrera yeah. S. Yeah. But PDK on that, good spec. No silly seats, just the comfort seats. Yeah. Heated. The, well, the, the, the thing that's about a, 911 that's a good GT system. car that's yeah. also a good sports car. It is a good GT. It is more towards sporty, this is towards more GT, but yeah. Yeah. I think it nice comes down to, to have. it comes down to badge. And I think if you want ultimate cosseting in, internally, oh, I think the Bentley will win over the Porsche. Yes. Um, a bit more a bit, little bit more backseat space as well if you I'm need no, to transport I'm not, I'm children. I've never spent any journey time back there. I don't think you'd, you'd shall, want to, shall, would I, you? shall I spend a bit of journey time back then? Oh, why put yourself through it? You might, you might herniate something getting in. That's the problem I always find with those cars. You suddenly go, oh, something's popped out of place. Really? I, well, it happened to me once. I, I think I strained a muscle in my thigh getting into an FSO polonaise. <laughs> well, I told you about that. Yeah, you did. Oh, you I went to Poland me. and then someone really, invited me to the... sit into a polonaise and the wheel was really low. And when I slid underneath it, Something went in my thigh and I thought I couldn't get out again. And they offered you a drive and you really wanted to drive it, but you were hurt. No, the battery was flat. Oh, the battery and was also flat. my leg was spasming wildly. <laughs> um, yeah. I'd, 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 I'd like to spend a bit of time back there. If I did spend a bit of time back there, rest assured, I would have some dessert wine with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, this is sweet. Oh, yeah, but I, nice. I don't, but think, nice. don't think I can do dessert wine. As oh, something, I mean... Have you ever been out for like, there's a group of you, say four of you go out for dinner, so you've polished off a couple of bottles of wine with, with main food. Yes. And someone goes, should we get some dessert wine? It feels incredibly luxurious. Well, very yeah. luxurious. It feels a bit like you're going, oh hello. Do you have that and a dessert? Oh god, yeah. Oh, okay. And then you okay. go, and then you're in the back of an Uber on the way home, feeling distinctly bilious. Oh, you're, that you're. Kind of, <laughs> oh, I've had a luxurious evening. You're bubbling in the back of an Uber. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, what I was going to say about 911s? Yes, this is Bentley's 911. That was the point I was going to make. This is Bentley's 911. Been going for a while. They don't change it often. When they do, it's a cautious evolution. But if you put Two generations ago, yeah. next to the latest one, you kind of go, "Oh, they are quite different, aren't they?" Yeah. But they don't they don't rock the boat too much. No. They're keeping the style. They're keeping the overall look. They want to this. Custom. This is the standard Conti GT. This is your Carrera. This is Continental GT Carrera. Mm -hmm. 
they've even learned Porsche's trick of rinsing you on options for things you actually want. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. And they've got uh, they've got a sort of good bedrock, and then there'll be a convertible, a bit softer. Yeah. But then there'll be some hardcore ones. There'll be a speed, and there'll be well, there was a, a GT. GT3 one, yeah. yeah, which is awesome. And it's not, I mean, it's not the same as a 911, it's not hardcore, hardcore sporty, but it's a bedrock from which they can go a little bit softer, soft roof, yeah. lovely car in its own right, I'm sure. And then hardcore, a bit more serious, a bit more sporty. But this is your everyday yeah. model that gently evolves over time and just gets better and better and better. Well, it is, it is like a 911. Yeah, I, I suppose it is actually, and also Bentley's, my brother constantly reminds me of this, the original ethos of the Bentley was never ever to be as light and nimble as possible. No. It was all about sheer strength and power and, mm. and rope longevity. In other words, I can drive this car flat out for 24 hours. Didn't in Mr time. Bugatti call them lorries? Yeah in a rather disdainful yeah, way. Yeah, because if you compare a 20s Bugatti to a 20s Bentley, the Bugatti's about half the size. Really? It's tiny, yeah, it's absolutely ah. tiny. Whereas a Bentley, even a you know a normal kind of wheelbase, Bentley is a monster, is a, a true powerhouse. Mm. But also, WO was big on, um, Big on big, big on reliability to the point where he would always go for reliability over lightness. So, you know, uh, the ignition was always, you know, belt and braces. Whereas, right. whereas the Italians and, uh, would always go for minimal effort. Oh, you uh, know, this this will okay. probably work. <laughs> and so, so that's why I suppose this does keep true to its ethos in that it's a heavy car, but it's a bloody well appointed car. Yeah. As well as being quick. The last time I had one of these was the old shape one. Was the was the the speed, GT Speed. Yeah. Um, I happened to go and see a friend of mine who is not particularly into cars at all. But is the most urban cool person I know. Urban. Yeah, he's just he, he knows what's going on in the street. He's just he's just a very cool guy, and he knows what's going on. He just on does. On he's one of those people. He just does. And he that's the thing. It's almost like you wouldn't be interested in cars because cars aren't that cool compared to yeah, you know, a car's kind of just generally just unethical. I don't know. Well, he, you know, he's got a car, but anyway, he he found out what I was driving, and he was beside himself he's like that's my absolute favourite car it's my dream car it's a Bentley Continental yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah wow 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 yeah. okay which I found quite interesting yeah I that never is knew that about him I didn't think he'd give that much of a shit but maybe it's because he likes a lot of, kind of urban music and, and they do sort of show their faces a lot these Bentleys in there's a lot of displays videos, of so. wealth in um, videos which actually brings me on to a semi-relevant conversation to this is I personally think that there should be a rule that in music videos, you can't be seen in anything or wearing anything or involved in anything that you don't actually own. <laughs> because I think it should be illegal. And also, it's a, it's a bad impression. It makes, it makes young people think that you, you've got stuff that you actually haven't, which means you're lying. Uh, it's like kids yeah. in school that would go, yeah, my dad's got a BMW M5. And you go, he hasn't. <laughs> I know he hasn't. Oh, he has? Yeah, he has. No, he hasn't. So in rap videos, when I see geezers like ro rolling around on the bonnets of these sorts of things, <laughs> going on about you know the fact that they still live in Stratford or whatever, but they've got one of these and then they've got a convertible one and uh, they might have a they might have a man, seagoing man. vessel of some sort. It's like it's bobbins, mate. You, ha you haven't. <laughs> you haven't. You haven't even got one of these on payment. You haven't uh, even got one. You've hired it in for the video. You can't really afford it, and I'm out because that's a lie. Um, there's one thing that I think has come from uh, the urban music scene that I quite like. And in the final reckoning, you see, I'm thinking, I would have one of these over a DB11, but as I was staring down at a barrel of 200 grand and thinking, I want a kind of good, cruisy car that can also do a little bit of sporty. Yeah. Oh, you could get an awful lot of nice 911 for a lot less money. And I sort of feel like I'd err towards the 911 ultimately. Yeah. Because I also just like 911. What, because it would be no worse for experience, but you'd pocket. Yeah, except, you, you know, know, if you've got the kind of cash to buy one of these, in fact, you'd probably also have like a GT3 RS at home as well. But if, this is, say this is your that's only the complication. Car, yeah. What would draw me to this from the urban music scene is, I think, something that I, it goes on where this would be referred to as an MFB. M F A. M F B. What motherfucking Bentley? Do you think so? 
I thought you were talking about some German platform that this was on. I was thinking, I don't, don't remember the MSB. Is that the MLB? Is that the MEB? M- yeah, what is the one? MQB is the, is the one they do that's the... the um, yeah, ME... It's the sort of golf one, isn't it? MEB is the VW Electric one, yeah. isn't it? The new... Well, the this... I don't know what actual platform it's on, but yeah, if you're in the urban music scene, MFB. If this was a plug-in hybrid, same power, far cheaper to run, no less luxurious, would you give it, you know what? Well, it would work well as a hybrid because that sort of what, what it's it's got that part of its character is having just loads of really easy low down torque. You just you just squirt so and go. A, a little electric motor giving a little bit of low down, yeah, uh, in loose speed situations would be um, perfect. Yeah, and then I don't know, but what engine would you put with it? Because you'd still you don't want a V six. I don't think. Yeah. Want a, you don't want a four. You want a Ford. You want a Ford one liter eco boost. No. With pipe. I thought you were going to say a Pinto. Yeah, but on, <laughs> just on. Well, you desperately be keeping the speed down so it's only on electric because you don't want this absolute, <laughs> this absolute nail on twin in. twin forty eight to just go. Ah, ah. And you go, God, this is weird. I've got this four cylinder engine that's really deafening when I put my foot down. But not from the exhaust, but it's inhaling the dashboard. Ah, oh, it's a blessed relief when it just drops onto electric power. It just gives you a little bit of a chance to just hear your own thoughts again. Uh, I, yeah, or well, that, that little three cylinder diesel they put in Polos. It was quite was, a fun engine, but God, it was a it was bit. In, it was industrial. It was a bit noisy. I. 100 years of Bentley. They're getting older, we're getting older. Mm. Am I more drawn to it now than I was when I was 30 or 25? I am, but I don't know if it's an age thing. I think it's because it's got better and it appeals to me more because they've just done a better job of it. Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. And also, there's a, the, the added layer of appeal that you go, this is sort of, this is a bit of a, a, a blue blooded floor pan and a suspension that it's built on. You know, this was developed with Porsche. Mm and with this car in mind from the off where the old one I know it was sort of meant to be that from the off but let's be honest it was also a VW Phaeton yeah and it's it's it just felt like it's sort of the bloodline was slightly diluted this is sort of this kind of feels like more the car they would have wanted to do from the off that's what Bentley said to me this was did they they they, and I don't know if it was off the record so I apologise if it was (laughs) but they basically said to me this is the car the Continental should have always been Ah. but going back to what What you just said what you've just said is exactly urban rap centric again you've just wrapped up almost this, this 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 the review of this car by saying it's like a really good collaboration and as you all know all modern day rap artists they don't do anything on their own anymore it's all a collab everything's a collab so why wouldn't you collab why would you do it on your own you get lonely <laughs> spend too much time in the studio <laughs> on your own smoking weed this on my own oh, no, yeah, yeah. like spitting rhymes inviting, alone inviting some friends over so this is a good collab this is it's a good uh, collab Prof Porsche times W.O. Bentley. Yep. Or the Bentleys with some kind of double A. Double E and a Z. Z. Yeah. Is the secret to a chart topping hit. Yeah, it is. Just in time for the cent. Do you say centenary or centenary? Mm. I don't know now. Centennial? Centennials, yeah, because you wouldn't say centennial, would you? (laughs) Centennial! That's that stuff they made jumpers from in the 90s. Hi guys, I'm Centennial. Um, <laughs> uh, Shaquille O'Centennial. That is a hundred year old Shaquille O'Neal. Centennial? Centennial? <laughs> why, why have we never talked about Shaquille O'Neal? <laughs> the incredibly soft <laughs> 90s are. <laughs> 90s athletes. He's like, guys, when I'm running around getting really energetic. Oh, it's not very breathable, though, is it? It's oh, like, very sweaty, oh, but oh, it's soft to the touch. Guy, it hangs off me, but I do quite like it. Oversized chenille jumper while I'm dunking. I can't figure out whether I'm getting older or this car is just getting significantly more desirable as it gets older because I didn't much care for the first gen one. No. And then I like the second gen one more and I really like the speed version. Yeah. And this, out of the box, 
you I, like it? I really like this. But, so it's you, it 10 years, 12 years I'm just on. I'm getting lazier and fatter and I just go, Oh, there's look, one. there's a Gen 1 one. Hello. I just waved like an absolute ah! penis. What am I doing? <laughs> Why would I think that was a good idea? Don't I'm going to have to ask you to get out. <laughs>